Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Mississippi High School Sports Awards. Brought to you by the Clarion Ledger. Talent will always be found. It doesn't matter where you play uh, or, or where you're from. Uh, when you have talent, people will find you. Some of the biggest names in the world of sports come together to honor the best high school athletes in the country. Alex Morgan, Katie Ledecky, Aaron Rodgers, Sue Bird, Shaquille O'Neal. Now do you know my name? Yeah, you know, oh, you know, do you know my name? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Fire, fire, fury, fury, power, power. My name is, my name is, uh, legend. It's a celebration of athletic excellence from those who know it best. Here are your hosts, Heisman Trophy winner and ESPN analyst Desmond Howard and the host of NFL Live and SEC Nation, Laura Rutledge. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to the show. Tonight we get to celebrate one of the most passionate and exciting groups in all of sports, the high school athlete. That's right, Laura. An incredible list of all-star talent has signed on to help recognize these amazing men and women. We're talking Aaron Rodgers, Alex Morgan, Chipper Jones, Sue Bird, Katie Ledecky, and the big man himself, Shaquille O'Deal. <laughs> I love it. You know, I actually think it's illegal these days to have a sports award without Shaq in it. I think you're right. So I'm glad he's on board for our show tonight. Of course, and the Diesel has something in common with everyone else on this show. At one point or another, we all went to high school. True, and while the time since high school has been a while, uh, for some more than others, <laughs> we all still remember the hopes and dreams and even the challenges of that memorable time in our lives. And tonight we all return to high school to cover a lot of sports and give out a lot of awards. If two people showed up to cheer for it and those two people were your parents, we're celebrating it tonight. So ditch the backpacks and summer reading lists and forget about that pop quiz you bombed in third period French last semester. It's time to celebrate some of the state's best high school athletes. Of course, none of this will be possible without the generous support of our sponsors. And you can't have a celebration this big without a little flexing going on. That's why we have sports broadcaster Abby Labar keeping an eye on the land of the humble brag. Thanks, Laura. And speaking of bragging, we know you love to, and we love to see it. So tag us in your social posts, share photos and videos from your own celebrations using tonight's hashtag. Posts on Instagram or Twitter will be shown on the social media feed on the show website. Okay, so we know every award show needs a red carpet. And lucky for us, two former college football players agreed to host ours tonight. If you don't know them as football players, well, you probably know them better from another little gig they had. The Bachelorette and The Bachelor, my friends, Tyler Cameron and Matt James. Thanks, Abby. Matt and I are so excited to be here. We got out, got dressed up, and stepped into our freshest kicks to walk the red carpet. Wait, are those my shoes? Bro, you put them in my closet. I'm wearing them now. Tonight we get a chance to salute some show out high school athletes. So who's handing out the roses? I'm in the awards tonight. Mm. Careful now. We talked about this and we let that go. We were playing sports long before our bachelor days, so we know how exciting this must be for you. But tonight's not about us. It's about the athletes of today. The records they're breaking, the bars they're raising, and the names we'll be reading and remembering in the future. So whether or not you win tonight, just know you've already proven to be a top athlete. So congratulations, this red carpet is all for you. Thanks guys. I don't know about you, Desmond, but I'm ready to start giving these kids some of their hard earned awards. Hey, let's do it. We're gonna kick things off in the pool. Here to help us dive right in is one of the most decorated female swimmers in US history, the legendary Katie Ledecky. 
Katie Ledecky burst on the competitive swimming scene at 15 years old. At the London Olympics, she took home the gold and the first of many Olympic medals. She's added four more golds, 15 world championships, two NCAA titles, and a whole bunch of freestyle world records. The recent Stanford grad is back in the pool, training for Tokyo. Hey everybody, Katie Ledecky talking to all you swimmers and divers out there. I know a lot of the world puts us all together in one big group because we spend half of our time in the pool and the other half of the time trying to get chlorine out of our hair. But we are a very diverse group. Divers launch themselves off of boards and platforms of varying heights, and swimmers employ a bunch of different strokes and distances, each with its own unique demands. That's why I'm here so I can speak to all of you individuals and tell you the key to success in your water world is to always, always, always keep moving forward. Except, of course, anyone who competes in backstroke or performs back dives. That advice would be very bad for you. You guys keep going backward. That sounded weird. I'm gonna go back in the pool. I'll leave all you divers to your diving and your backstrokers to your backstroking. I'll see you later. Here are the honorees for the Female Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year. And the finalists are... And Mississippi's Female Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year is... Amber Bounds of Pearl River Central High School. Amber Bounds won two individual state championships in 2020. The Pearl River Central High School star won the 200 meter freestyle and the 500 meter freestyle. She won gold medals after finishing twice in second place in 2019. Congratulations, Amber. Here are the honorees for the Male Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year. And the finalists are And Mississippi's Male Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year is Hayden Cuevas of Pass Christian High School. Hayden Cuevas has been collecting medals for his swimming prowess since he was a sophomore. And each year he's improved on his medal status. After taking home three silver and one bronze medal at state as a sophomore and junior, he capped his prep's career with the gold he'd been eyeing. Cuevas earned the Mississippi's highest ranking position in two races, the butterfly and backstroke. Congratulations, Hayden. If you had to name the sport that most pro athletes choose to play when they're not at their paying gig, it would have to be golf. It doesn't mean they're good at it, <laughs> but it doesn't mean they're as bad as Charles Barkley either. But we decided to tap someone who makes their living driving for show and putting for dough. Here's Ryan Palmer with the Golf Awards. Four-time champion Ryan Palmer is no stranger to success. On the PGA Tour, where every week is a battle of attrition, he's taken home four tour victories, 11 runners-up, 67 top 10 finishes, including two in the majors. Hey, all you golfers out there. PGA Tour winner Ryan Palmer here to hand out the golf awards. But before I do, I want to point out something about golf compared to other sports. Listen, I get it. There's no buzzer or beating golf. No one is throwing the ball 100 miles an hour at you, and no one is going to smash into you at the top of your swing and throw you to the ground. That's all true. But there's something awesome about golf that you can't find in a lot of other sports. If you've got a couple of hours to spare, you can play on the same courses that Tiger, Phil, myself, Annika and MB, or even Rory and DJ play on. Try shooting hoops with your friends at Madison Square Garden. Or play nine innings at the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. Let's hear it for the game of golf, where legendary venues are open to all. Here are your honorees for the Female Golfer of the Year.
And the finalists are... And the Mississippi Female Golfer of the Year is... Caroline King of New Albany High School. Caroline King fought rain and wind to take home medalist honors and the top position in the Girls Class 2 State Gold Championship with a two round total of 158. She led her team to a second place finish in the same tournament, but the finale of her junior year was just the icing on a season where she earned medals in every tournament she competed in. Congratulations on being the best in the state, Caroline. Here are your honorees for the Male Golfer of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Mississippi Male Golfer of the Year is... Walker Wise of Tupelo High School. Tupelo's Walker Wise was the lead performer on a golf team stacked with talent and a history of winning it all. The Golden Wave cruised to a 19-stroke win to seal the team's 15th state championship. Wise had seven birdies in the tournament and no three putts to earn medalist honors with a total of five under 139, topping his second place finish the prior year. And while the team may have saved the best for last, the junior was incredible the entire year winning the SJGT Gulf Shore Junior Classic and earning a place on the all-tournament team. Congratulations on being the best in the state, Walker. A lot of sports have similar concepts and equipment, boundaries, balls, and scoreboards, name a few. But there are two that make use of sand. One is golf, where it's to be avoided, and the other is beach volleyball, where it's embraced in all its gritty glory. Here to lend a hand with our volleyball awards is someone who knows achieving greatness is no day at the beach, Carrie Walsh Jennings. Carrie Walsh Jennings, also known as Six Feet of Sunshine, is covered in Olympic gold. The 42-year-old SoCal standout is the most decorated beach volleyball player in Olympic history. She and her former teammate, Misty May Trainer won three gold medals and five world championships earning the title, the greatest beach volleyball team of all time. Hey everybody, Carrie Walsh Jennings here. I know this looks like a volleyball, but in reality, it's a ticket to your future because the lessons you learn hitting this sucker around will come in handy down the road. Things like teamwork, determination, goal setting, you're going to need all of those skills. And then, there are the friends you make with this. Ones you'll have for the rest of your life. Priceless. So don't think of it as just a volleyball. Think of it as your secret weapon for success. Here are your honorees for the Female Volleyball Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And Mississippi's Volleyball Player of the Year is Julia Dice of Hartfield Academy. Prep Volleyball slated Julia Dice among 100 Fall High School All-Americans who had the most impact on their teams and states in 2020. The outside hitter completed her fall season hitting at a .429 clip and was named All-MAIS from 2018 to 2020. Dice broke the Hartfield Academy kill record, tallying more than 1,200 career kills in her four years. She ranks second in school history with a total of 699 digs. This fall, when she suits up for Ole Miss, she'll be the first Mississippi student to receive a full-ride indoor volleyball scholarship from a D1 in-state program. Congratulations, Julia. Not all of our awards are sports specific. There are a few that draw their list of exceptional candidates from across the athletic spectrum. The first of those is our I Am Sport Award. This award spotlights student athletes who have taken the leadership role outside of competition, volunteering their help to improve their communities. 
And to present it, we have the truly amazing athlete and mental health advocate, Imani McGee Stafford. Imani was selected 10th overall in the 2016 WNBA draft by the Chicago Sky. But while she was a student at the University of Texas, she shared her very personal story. From the ages of 8 to 12, Imani was abused by a relative. That trauma led her to attempt to take her own life multiple times. Like so many others carrying painful secrets, she thought she was the only one. But through counseling and writing, she changed her life. Imani has stepped away from professional sports to pursue a law degree, but nothing has stopped her from speaking out against the stigma long associated with those in need of mental health services. Her bravery has helped so many people she's never met, much like the nominees of the I Am Sport Award who share her passion for helping others. Here she is, Imani McGee Stafford. Hey, all you athletes out there, guess what? We all have something in common. When we practice, we get to see very clearly the fruits of our labor. Doesn't matter if it's measured in inches or seconds, pounds or points, velocity or victories, we can clearly see how we are improving. But there are so many people out there who have a hard time seeing any improvement in their day-to-day -day lives. Just like we are helped by coaches, teachers, teammates, and family to reach our potential in our sport, we need to help others reach their potential in life. And I am proud to see that so many of you are out there doing just that. The I Am Sport Award is our way to say thank you for all of your efforts. You are showing that high school athletes can give more to their communities than their signature win over a rival team. They can give hope. Here are your honorees. Here are your finalists. And the I Am Sport Award goes to Alice Williams of Jackson Academy. Multi-sport standout and honor roll student Alice Williams embodies the spirit of the I Am Sport Award. Williams is working on her Gold Star Award with the Girl Scouts, which involves working with the Rankin County School District to teach the importance of dental hygiene. She also actively serves her church community each week as a discipleship group student leader at Christ United Methodist Church. Williams has devoted her time to these younger students, and it is evident by those around that she has invested herself in their lives. She has a spirit of service, allowing her to become a significant and lasting influence on the lives of those she helps as she inspires others to be better than they think they can be. Good job, Alice. There are some athletes today who have been so dominant, you only have to say their first name for everyone to know who you're talking about. They become celebrities, giants of their sport. That's right. Our next presenter was an athlete like that during her long career. She made her mark as a teenager, practically ruled at Wimbledon, and was still taking home major titles at the age of 49. The name Navratilova will be in the record books for years to come. But for so many of us, all you have to say is Martina. Martina Navratilova is one of the most dominant players to ever swing a racket. Born in the former Czechoslovakia, the former world number one claimed 18 Grand Slam singles titles, added to her 31 doubles and 10 mixed doubles. 59 major titles are the most by any player, male or female, in the open era. Hey everybody, Martina Navratilova here to tell you that you picked a great sport to play in high school because it's a sport that you can play your whole life. I mean, look at me. I'm still out there on the court all the time playing for hours and I'm like uh, 60. Never mind. You, know, you can see by my hair how old I am. My hair is thinning. But anyway, I don't know why I did that. Um, because you guys can just Google my name and kind of figure out how old I am and then Instagram me about it, whatever. Um, anyway, all the effort that you are putting in now, it can pay dividends well past your competitive playing days. Remember, you can love other sports, but tennis is the only sport where love is literally part of the game. Here are the honorees for the Female Tennis Player of the Year. Woo! 
And the finalists are... And the Mississippi Female Tennis Player of the Year is... McKenna Wheatley of St. Andrews Episcopal School. St. Andrews McKenna Wheatley won yet another individual state championship, and the rising senior never dropped a game in the tournament en route to winning the 3A state title. The junior has been in the spotlight for years, ranking in the top 200 USTA rankings and top 200 nationally. An all-state honoree as a freshman in 2019, after winning the Class 3A state singles title without losing a game, Wheatley looks to continue her dominance going into her senior year. Congratulations, McKenna. Here are the honorees for the Male Tennis Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Mississippi Male Tennis Player of the Year is... Walker Ellis of Madison Central High School. Walker Ellis made history when he became the second player in Madison Central to win two boys single state championships during his career. Ellis, a Mississippi College signee, avenged the only loss of his high school career at the last state tournament in 2019 to claim his first state crown. Ellis also played doubles to help Madison Central win its third straight 6A team championship. Ellis is rated as the number two recruit in Mississippi by the Tennis Recruiting Network. Congratulations, Walker. Bruce Springsteen once topped the charts with his iconic album, Born to Run. But for this ultra marathon man, those aren't words that you sing. Those are words you live by. Presenting the awards for cross country, Dean Karnazes. Dean Karnazes, the legendary Badwater Ultra Marathon champion, running 135 miles through Death Valley in 124 degree heat. He later ran a marathon at the South Pole. This superhuman and best selling author has run 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days. Hey guys. Dean Karnass is here to talk a little cross country, but first, a quick confession. I only ran cross country as a freshman in high school. Our team won the state championships, and I figured that I couldn't top that, so I stopped running. Until later in life. Now I've raced and competed on all seven continents. But enough about me. This is about you guys, the best cross country runners from across the country. Here are the honorees for the female cross country runner of the year. And the finalists are... And the Mississippi Female Cross Country Runner of the Year is Brooklyn Bianca Mano of Long Beach High School. The state's two-time returning Gatorade Girls Cross Country Player of the Year, the five foot four inch junior distance talent led the Bearcats to fourth place at the Class 5A state championships breaking the tape to win the individual title at 18 minutes 15.60 seconds, the fastest time of all classes in the postseason. A scholar athlete with a 5.48 weighted GPA, this four-time state champion and all-state selection, Bianca Mano ran the state's top 5K girls time, a personal best of 17 minutes. 41.18 seconds in 2020, which was 24.77 seconds faster than her next closest competitor. Congratulations, Brooklyn. Here are the honorees for the male cross country runner of the year. And the finalists are And the Mississippi Male Cross Country Runner of the Year is Christian Valser of East Central High School. A two-time individual state champion and Gatorade Boys Cross Country Player of the Year, Christian Valser blew away the rest of the competition by a whole minute at the 5A state meet 
and didn't lose a race in 2020. He led the Hornets to a sixth place finish as a team with a time of 15 minutes, 15.40 seconds, the fastest all-class clocking of the postseason. Balser went on to run a state record 5K time of 14 minutes, 48.83 seconds to finish sixth at the Running Lane National Cross Country Championships, earning first team All-American status in the process. He will attend Mississippi College this fall, where he will compete in both cross country and track and field. Congratulations, Christian. We have loved seeing how you are celebrating. Thank you for posting and letting us celebrate with you. Keep posting on Instagram and Twitter using the hashtags for a chance to win an autographed gift from one of our featured guests tonight. Now let's hear from some honorees with our friends, Matt and Tyler. Thanks, Abby. One thing you can say about us athletes is some of us tend to be a little superstitious. Some eat the same thing before every game, some listen to the same music, some people even wear the same sock for every game for years. Really? Bro, the <laughs> Sam's Club socks? Come on, bro. The thick cotton ones? I know, but we had socks from our school. And you wouldn't like wear them. them. You would stink up the whole place because you wouldn't even wash them. You'd forget to wash them. You still do the same thing in my apartment. In any case, we want to hear from some of the greats. Let's see what they've done to lock in the wins. I, I think I used to have like a ton of rituals. Well, I'm a pitcher, and so we're kind of known for um, being a little different. <laughs> I had my special hair ties. I would have to shower before every competition. I've always had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich before I played. Um, I pretty much just put on my right sock before my left sock, my left shoe before my right shoe. I never touched the lines. I always warmed up 27 minutes before game time. But my one, I guess, like pregame ritual would be that I always pass with one particular teammate, Lauren Moyer. I didn't have any rituals or lucky anything, and I tried to stay away from those things because luck scares me. There are some things in certain playlists that might last an entire season or might uh, you might listen to a certain playlist that you made and lose or have a bad game and that thing gets, uh, gets erased pretty quickly. I do do three claps on the blocks typically before I, I start my race. Like if I do something before a workout, before a competition and I notice that I had a good day, I now have to do said thing until the meet is done. I mean, obviously all ritual is a mental thing, but they were a big part of my preparation. Kind of like Dumbo's feather, like you don't need, need the feather to fly. You have it within you. 30 minutes before game time, um, eight, yeah, it's embarrassing. Four chocolate chip cookies and an orange Powerade. Well, that certainly was <laughs> educational. Whatever it takes, right? Yeah. And what about you, Desmond? I would think a Heisman Trophy winner would have some good pregame rituals. Did you do anything? Yeah, you know, it's pretty silly and goofy, but I used to put everything on in the same particular order. No matter if we're home or away, like the right sock and the left sock. You know, it's just, I know it's ridiculous. I do it now, even when I put on my suit. So, you, put, so my... you put your suit on in that particular order that you used to put your uniform on today? That's what you did? Absolutely. Well, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> All right, that was very good. So moving on, let's get to our next set of awards. <laughs> okay, let's be honest. I'm never going to suit up in a goalie gear and stand in front of a 100 mile an hour slap shot or block Shaq's shot. But I have put on a pair of tricolor rented shoes and rolled a ball down a grease lane with some friends. So with the help of legendary Chris Barnes, let's go bowling, man. Chris Barnes, the Kansas native, has claimed 19 PBA Tour titles during his 20-plus year bowling career. This 2018 PBA Hall of Fame inductee has rolled 55 perfect games and is the only bowler in history to win Collegiate Player of the Year, the PBA Rookie of the Year, PBA Player of the Year, World Cup Champion, and the World Singles Gold Medal. Hey everybody, Chris Barnes here to give a much deserved shout out to my fellow bowlers. For some reason, bowling doesn't seem to get as much love out there in the world as some of their high school sports. I for one can't think of a single reason why that would be. As the fastest growing high school sport in America, it seems times are changing. In our sport where perfection is an attainable goal, an accomplished bowler will always have a keen eye, laser-like attention to detail, and they'll have to make all parts of their game work together to be in absolute harmony with their surroundings, just like an athlete in any other sport. 
So I'm not sure why there is often this subtle lack of respect for bowling out there in the media. Maybe it's the shoes, but at least we don't have referees, right? Here are your honorees for the Female Bowler of the Year. And the finalists are... And Mississippi's Female Bowler of the Year is... Mackenzie Conway of Hancock High School. Mackenzie Conway led the Lady Hawks to their second consecutive Class 3 state championship while rolling the state's highest individual score with 567 to earn an individual state title along the way. She also helped the talent-rich team break a Class 3 state record with 2,589 pinfall. In her first year with the high school team, the freshman earned a place on the All-State First Team. Congratulations, Mackenzie. And now for the guys lane. Here are your honorees for the male bowler of the year. And the finalists are. The Mississippi male bowler of the year is Devin Coughlin of East Union High School. Devin Coughlin rolled a whopping 688 to take home the individual state championship title in bowling and first team All-State honors. The senior was the highest scorer in the state and helped lead a star-studded bowling squad to the Class 1 state title. Congratulations, Devin. When you're on the track, you know records are made to be broken. And legends can be made in a fraction of a second. That's why you always have to come with your best. You never know when it's your time to make your mark and when the world is watching. And the world definitely watched our next presenter. He remains the only man to win gold in the 200 and 400 at the same Olympics. The one and only legendary sprinter, Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson. This Texan dominated sprinting for most of the 90s. Of his 16 major international medals, not a single one isn't gold. After becoming the first and only man to defend an Olympic 400 meter title in Sydney, and to this day, the US records in the 200, 300, and 400 meters still bear his name. Hey everybody, Michael Johnson here to help celebrate the amazing achievements of the athletes from the friendliest sport there is, track and field. I know all those other sports will be mad that I said that, but think about it. When most sports have teams come together to compete, they call it a game. Some call it a match. But when we compete, where do we do it? At a meet. You can't get much more friendly than a meet as far as competition goes. Speaking of which, it's time to meet our honorees. And the finalists are... And the Mississippi Female Track and Field Athlete of the Year is Brooklyn Biancamano, Long Beach High School. Brooklyn Biancamano is a star runner whether long distances in cross country or with shorter efforts on the track. The two-time Mississippi Gatorade Track and Field Athlete of the Year won the 5A 800 and 3200 state championships. She was also part of the 4x400 team that won their race. With a year left to go at the high school level, Bianca Mano is already a 12-time track state champion. Congratulations, Brooklyn. What a legacy you've made for yourself. And still another year to go. And now for the guys' side. Here are your honorees for the Male Track and Field Athlete of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Mississippi Male Track and Field Athlete of the Year is Christian Balser of East Central High School. Mississippi's top-ranked runner, Christian Balser, didn't lose on the indoor or outdoor track in any race held in the state. 
claiming gold at 23 competitions this season, including three at the state finale. He ran his personal best in the one-mile run at the Running Lane Track Championships and earned the silver for his efforts. He is ranked 49th in the nation for his pace in the mile and is first in Mississippi in all four track meet race distances. Congratulations, Christian. Best of luck at Mississippi College. It is called the beautiful game. And with three and a half billion soccer fans, that's right, billion with a B, <laughs> around the world, I think you have a hard time arguing with that description. Just like no one can argue that Alex Morgan is one of the most accomplished players, man or woman, in the history of the U.S. national team, and the perfect choice to present our soccer awards. When Alex Morgan steps on the pitch, it is game on. With a knack for late game heroics, Morgan's goal and extra time in the semifinals of the London Olympics helped propel the U.S. to gold. She would go on to win the World Cup in 2014 and 19. Hey everybody, Alex Morgan here. I've been so fortunate with all the things I've been able to do thanks to soccer. And you might be looking wide-eyed at that list of accomplishments, so it might surprise you to know that in this interaction we are having right now, I'm the envious one. I'm not kidding, because you guys are in or just finished high school, and I absolutely loved my time in high school. It was down by high school in Southern California. Go Brahmas! Our colors were purple and gold, and our cheer was loud and proud. Yeah, that stuff stays with you. I'm envious because high school is special, you guys have your whole life ahead of you, which is scary, but also really exciting at the same time. So congrats on all your accolades and just try to really enjoy the ride. Your older self will thank you, trust me. Here are your honorees for the Female Soccer Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Mississippi Female Soccer Player of the Year is Kate Smith of Gulfport High School. Kate Smith led Gulfport to a second straight state title in 6A with a game-winning goal in the title-clinching game. Dubbed Lil Smith, the 5-foot, 4-inch forward scored 35 goals and assisted on 17 more as part of the team's run to a 22-1-2 and overall record. Smith, an Ole Miss commit, was also named the Gatorade Girls Soccer Player of the Year. Congratulations on being the best in the state, Kate. And now for the guys' side. Here are your honorees for the Male Soccer Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Mississippi Male Soccer Player of the Year is Nolan Owens of Adams County Christian Academy. Three sports superstar Nolan Owens of Adams County Christian finished with 49 goals and eight assists in 22 games, scoring in every game he played but one. The senior, who also played tennis and baseball for the school, led the state in goals and points and will play at the next level for Holmes Community College at Ridgeland. Congratulations on being the best in the state, Nolan. Hey guys, it's Aaron Rodgers, and I'll be handing off some football awards in just a bit. Maybe I'll be saying your name, so stick around to find out. Are you guys hungry? Yeah. All right, let's get some apps. Let's do it. It's as easy as that. Let us refill for you. Hey, you go, guys. Wow, that was so fast. Thank you Enjoy. so much. All right, cheers, guys. Hey, I'll be right back. Okay. No one likes waiting in long lines or missing the big moments. We're making it easier for you to get back to what you love without missing a single minute. Refill. Did I miss anything? Woo! 
Now, Laura, you know they say defense wins championships. I know you won't get any argument about that from our next presenter. But even if you did, I'm pretty sure you'd let him win that argument. Yeah, I'd sure stay out of his way. Also, those people haven't met you. But anyway, here to present the Defensive Football Player of the Year is T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt, the youngest in an NFL family dynasty, was drafted in the first round by the Steelers in 2017 and became the first rookie to start at linebacker for the black and gold in more than 30 years. He has earned three Pro Bowl selections, led the league in sacks in 2020, and is a two-time Defensive Player of the Year finalist. Hey everybody, it's TJ Watt giving some much deserved props to the defenders out there. We all know that the offense is the one everybody likes to talk about and read about during the season. But over the long haul, history looks back kindly on those who defend. Think about it. The heroes of the Alamo, they were defenders. The iconic and beloved lawyer Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird, defender. Even one of the early super popular video games back in the 80s was called, you guessed it, Defender. And how would you describe a talented player on the other side of the ball? You call them offensive, like a bad smell or a horrendous outfit, like that uncle who always jokes weirdly at Christmas. So keep doing what you're doing out there in the field. People may go nuts for the quarterbacks today, but they'll always remember you defenders for years to come. Here are your honorees for the Defensive Football Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Mississippi Defensive Football Player of the Year is Ty Cooper. Ty Cooper, the state's top defensive line prospect, helped the Wildcats take home the 4A state crown in a dramatic last-minute victory. Dubbed as 2020 Mr. 4A Football, the Louisville star had interest from some of the biggest schools in the country, including Ole Miss, Texas, Tennessee, Memphis, and Colorado but ultimately decided to stay close to home with Mississippi State. A childhood dream to play there, he cited their ability to develop defensive linemen as one of the main reasons for his pick. Cooper finished the season with 112 total tackles and 12 sacks. He also forced and recovered three fumbles. Congratulations, Ty. A big thanks to T.J. Watt for helping us out with the defense. And before we move on to offense, I was thinking, you know, Desmond, if I could get you, mm -hmm. T.J., and our next presenter on my flag football team, yeah. I could go ahead and just plan the victory dinner before the season even started. Oh, that's true. That's true. Oh, man, I love to run routes for this guy. His accuracy and creativity as a signal caller make him a receiver's dream. So more on my flag football team later, but he is one of the best and has certainly carved out a place for his name in the record books. Here to present is legendary quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Super Bowl champion Aaron Rodgers holds the league's lowest career interception percentage and the highest single season passer rating in history. The nine-time Pro Bowl selection was also named the NFL's most valuable player last season, the third MVP trophy of his illustrious career. Hey everybody, Aaron Rodgers here to hand out some awards to incredibly deserving high school football players. Of course that got me thinking about all the things I love about our sport. You know, one of the most underrated aspects of football, the terminology. I mean, we got the blitz, the bomb, the sack, wild card. We spike, we trap, we fly, we Hail Mary from time to time, those are fun. No offense to other sports, but while they dribble or bunt, we hit the hole and shoot the gap. They can't stand tall with a Statue of Liberty or transform a turnover into a touchdown with a fumble ruski. So what do you say, we get in victory formation as we salute some amazing athletes from the gridiron. Here are the honorees for the Offensive Football Player of the Year. And the finalists are...
And the Mississippi Offensive Football Player of the Year is Ty Keys of Taylorsville High School. Southern Miss signee Ty Keys was the back-to-back -back Mississippi Gatorade Football Player of the Year after throwing for 2,546 yards, 30 touchdowns, and running for an extra 560 yards. He led the Tartars to the Mississippi High School Activities Association 2A Football Championship, the third championship of his four-year career. He's a three-time Mr. Football selection by the Mississippi Association of Coaches. A four-star recruit, Keyes is the number seven ranked dual threat quarterback in the country and finished his preps career with 14,525 yards and 155 touchdowns. Congratulations on being the best in the entire state of Mississippi, Ty. Let's move on to a very impressive award. Here are your female honorees. Here are your finalists. And the Mississippi Female Powerlifter of the Year is Alicia McKinney of South Pontotoc High School. Alicia McKinney earned the highest girls state total score of 1,185. The junior put up the highest deadlift score of 480 pounds and tied a state high bench press of 195 pounds, earning the 242 plus class two state championship. The two time state medalist looks to retain her title in her senior year. And now for the guys. Here are your honorees. Here are your finalists. And the Mississippi Male Powerlifter of the Year is Jaden Lowe of Okalona High School. Jaden Lowe earned the 165-pound weight class state championship. In his first year, after winning the 148-pound state title, Lowe moved up to 165 and led the state with the highest total score. The sophomore still has two years left of competition, and it doesn't look like he will be slowing down anytime soon. Congratulations, great job. We all have that person we look to for inspiration that drives us to be better, that in turn helps us become an example for somebody else. And the cycle keeps repeating. Let's take a moment to hear about some of the people who've inspired athletes at every level. Hey guys, we're back. So let's talk about role models. Being that person who inspires others is what it's all about. It's one of the main reasons why we started ABC Food Tours, to share experiences, become mentors, and help kids in our communities. I mean, it's one of my favorite things we do. Give back to the kids, have fun with them, learn from them, teach them a little bit, nothing better. Yeah, it's, it's been super rewarding, you know, it's a lot of the lessons that I thought that I'd be teaching these kids is what I've learned from, learn from them. Exactly. Yeah, so mentoring, you learn a lot by giving, but you also learn a lot by receiving. Exactly. Even the pros have role models. Let's hear who inspired them and who they looked up to. My role model was Lisa Fernandez. Her standard of excellence was so high. Peekaboo Street was mine, and without her, you know, I don't know if I would be where I am, so I'm very, very grateful to her. My role model is Alex Morgan. My parents inspire me because they raised three strong daughters. My role model growing up was Cal Ripken. He was the all-round player. He was the Rookie of the Year. He was an MVP. He was a world champion all things that I wanted to accomplish in my career. My fiance Megan is also a little bit of my role model, um, just to see how she carries herself. I have a front row seat to it. I tried to change it to a real model. I look up to people who are authentic. You know, I always tell kids it's good to admire somebody. If you like what they do, steal it. My role model are my parents and siblings. My role model is my father. Both of my parents going back from day one, driving us all around, both of my brothers and I. My older brother was a great athlete, and uh, I was always chasing after him. I think the memory of my mom, uh, because she was always so kind and, uh, and so smart. The military um, and their effect they had on me and my rehab. You hope that as an athlete, you can have a positive impact on the community, and there's ways you do it 
vocally, through social media today, and most importantly, through action in the communities. And so to potentially be that for somebody else, uh, obviously is an amazing feeling. Chipper Jones here. Let's see who really knocked it out of the park this year. Coming up right after this. Excuse me. Hey, how's it going? Can I uh, can I get you a drink? Oh, no, I'm just up here to order some food. No, please, I, I got this round. Hey, can we get a couple drinks down here? Hey, buddy, can we get some drinks? These guys are slammed today. We'll we'll make it happen. Yeah, what's drinking? Can I buy you a drink? Guys, seriously, I'm just trying to order some fries. Hey, man, I I'm getting her a drink. No, no. No, I mean I like I I'm, okay. I'm getting her one right Thanks. now. Yeah, you're good, man. Hey, girl, I got you. Wow, thank you. How did you get these so fast? I ordered it through refill. What's refill? It's a new fast and easy way to order your food online. Oh, you can just order it right from the bar. Yep. And bring it to you. Absolutely. Incredible. Thanks so much. Oh, you're welcome. Softball might be the most misnamed sport there is. First off, the ball isn't soft at all. Just ask anyone who's ever been hit by one. Secondly, pitchers routinely hurl it over 70 miles an hour, standing only 43 feet from home plate. So don't confuse softball for being soft. To present our next set of awards, here's legendary pitcher Jenny Finch. An icon of the diamond, Jenny Finch caught the nation's attention pitching the University of Arizona to a national championship in 2001. Three years later, she was on the world stage, helping lead Team USA to the gold medal at the Athens Olympics. She would later collect a silver medal in Beijing and go on to boast an outstanding pro career on her way to the National Softball Hall of Fame. Hey everybody, Jenny Finch here with a question for all you softball players out there. Why can't they make a great sports movie about women's softball? Is it really that hard? I mean, our smaller sphered cousin baseball has tons of them. Sure, there is that comedy all-stars, but that's really more about the parents than it is about the players. Even a league of their own is about women's baseball where there is no crying, not softball. It makes no sense. Our sport provides plenty of drama, I don't know about you, but I've met some unforgettable characters in and around the diamond. And you have a built-in audience dying to see their sport up on the silver screen. So for any of you softball players out there with a mile-wide creative streak, start gathering some fun stories, start putting together some characters, and getting them down on paper. And let's see if we can make a movie about the greatest sport in the world, softball. And while we wait for that, Let's give out some awards. Here are your honorees for the Softball Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Mississippi Softball Player of the Year is Paige Kilgore of Houston High School. Pitcher and first baseman Paige Kilgore compiled a 22-2 record in the circle with a 1.20 earned run average this past season, leading the Hilltoppers to the Class 3A state quarterfinals. She allowed just 77 hits and amassed 247 strikeouts in 145.1 innings pitched. A starting pitcher for the Hilltoppers since 7th grade, she concluded her prep softball career with 112 wins in the circle. The Southern Mississippi signee will arrive in Hattiesburg with numerous team and personal awards, including a two-time Mississippi Gatorade Player of the Year and four-time Division Pitcher of the Year. Congratulations, Paige. In 1936, Major League Baseball became the first professional sport in North America to establish a Hall of Fame as a way to remember the grace of the game from every generation. Induction to the Hall is seen as the highest honor of an extraordinary player's remarkable career. To present our baseball awards is first ballot Hall of Famer, Chipper Jones. 
Chipper Jones was selected by the Atlanta Braves as the number one overall pick in 1990 and went on to become a mainstay in a Braves dynasty that claimed 11 consecutive division crowns and a World Series title. He captured two Silver Slugger awards and was the National League MVP in 1999. Hey everybody, can't tell you how proud I am to be a part of this presentation to all you hardworking baseball players out there. I also want to say how impressed I am at all the stats you guys use these days. Y'all have a measure for everything. When I was playing, we didn't talk much about range factors or wins above replacement or bequeath runner scored. Heck, we didn't even know what bequeath was. The only time we ever talked about launch angle was if we happened to see the space shuttle taking off. And exit velocity was how fast the fans left after big locks. But by embracing all the statistical analysis, you're getting new insights into this great game. You're also probably getting a lot better scores on your math tests, so keep up the good work. And don't let your Babbitt affect your Woba, whatever that means. Here are your honorees for the Baseball Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Mississippi Baseball Player of the Year is Braden Montgomery of Madison Central High School. Braden Montgomery put together a spectacular year at both the plate and on the mound in his senior season. The senior outfielder and right-handed pitcher led the Jaguars to a 34-2 record and the Class 6A state championship and a number five national ranking. The Stanford University commit is ranked by Perfect Game as the number 23 draft prospect for the upcoming MLB draft. Montgomery posted a 479 batting average with seven home runs, 50 RBI, and 30 runs scored. Congratulations, Braden. Many of the athletes featured tonight will continue their athletic careers in college. But our next presenter's talents were so prodigious that the professional leagues couldn't wait. To hand out our basketball awards, we have the big ticket himself, Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett, dubbed Mr. Basketball USA in 1995, was the first player drafted by the NBA straight out of high school in more than 20 years. This 15-time All-Star earned MVP and Defensive Player of the Year honors and an Olympic gold medal. Here he is, the big ticket himself. Hey, KG here. I know all you girls and guys have worked really hard in high school. I've totally earned all the props and recognition. You're getting it. But no matter how long you play this game, know one thing, they will never teach you at any point along the way is how to give out awards. I tell you right now, it's not easy. It's great that our country is a melting pot and we have people from all over. But that also means that the names can be pronounced a million different ways. So be kind to the big ticket, if you will. If I accidentally uh, mispronounce your name or if I don't get your name right perfectly, I mean, no disrespect. Uh, I have just seen these winners' names and I'm gonna try my best, okay? So let's get to it. Here are some honorees for the Female Basketball Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Mississippi Female Basketball Player of the Year is Madison Booker of Germantown High School. Germantown's Madison Booker still has two more years of high school basketball and as a sophomore is already getting looks from some of the top colleges across the country. One of her best performances of the year came in the 6A state tournament when she had 25 points, 16 rebounds, and 8 assists in a 65-32 blowout victory over Harrison Central. But perhaps her biggest accolade to date is earning a spot on the 2021 USA Basketball Women's U16 national team. 
She was one of just 12 players selected to the team. Booker, ranked number seven nationally in the class of 2023, averaged 18.8 .8 points and 7.8 rebounds the past season. Congratulations, Madison. And now for the ballers on the guy side. Here are your honorees for the male basketball player of the year. And the finalists are And Mississippi's male basketball player of the year is Deshaun Ruffin of Callaway High School. Callaway's Deshaun Ruffin put on a show on the court in Mississippi this season, averaging 33.1 points and 3.3 rebounds in his senior season. The McDonald's All-American led the Chargers to a 10-1 record and the Class 5A state quarterfinals in 2021. Ruffin, who will continue his basketball career at Ole Miss, will go in as the highest ranked recruit in Rebel history and is the fourth ranked point guard in the nation and number 15 overall. Congratulations to Sean. Courage means getting up after you've been knocked down. Failure is refusing to get up. Courage is getting up and doing something about it. Courage means being uncomfortable and being okay with that. Be willing to take a chance and maybe go against the flow. To put, put yourself on the line for something. I was always taught that courage means doing the right thing when no one's looking. Courage means stepping out of your comfort zone. Courage means you're fearless. Courage means facing your fears and saying, I'm not scared of you. Courage means doing the right thing all the time, not just when people are watching. Courage can mean that you're just not afraid to make mistakes. Not the absence of fear, but, but I think confronting your fears. One of my favorite quotes is by Mary Ann Ratmaker. It says, courage does not always roar. Some days, courage is the little voice that says, I'll try again tomorrow. Courage truly means so many things. Overcoming challenges is the very essence of sports. But there are times when adversity comes after the whistles have blown and the horns have sounded, and it's devastating. The Courage Award is given to an athlete who has faced tremendous hardship and through their strength and tenacity, were able to rise above it. In 2018, a traumatic on-field leg injury threatened to end Alex Smith's professional football career and his life. After 17 surgeries, a lethal infection, and two years of grueling rehab, he stepped back into the huddle to help lead the Washington football team to an improbable playoff berth. Here to honor our recipient and present the 2021 Courage Award is a man who is no stranger to hardship himself, 2020 NFL Comeback Player of the Year, Alex Smith. There are a lot of ways to define courage. For me, courage is like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder and the grace exhibited by our Courage Award winner is something to behold. Courage can be found overcoming a sudden and traumatic event or conquering a lifelong condition in ways the rest of us can't even imagine. What makes this athlete truly amazing is that they shared their very difficult, very personal story in order to help the next person who has the same brutal hill to climb. They found a way to turn courage into something shared, something inspiring, something beautiful. And the recipient of the Courage Award for the state of Mississippi is Walker Hill of Kosciuszko High School. Kosciuszko baseball went through a lot this season, but if it's one thing Walker Hill learned, it's not about what happens. It's about how you react to it. It was the guy that you know, you, you couldn't break him down. You know, he was going to tell you, hey, you think I can't do this? I'm going to do it. It started during summer workouts and carried on into the fall. Most people give it 100%. Walker's going to give it 110. It was real good. It was really good. We'd have been really good this year, too. I just started praying. I just, that's, I, that's all I knew to do. It happened on October the 10th, and um, he was he was out riding in his truck, hanging out with some friends. About 10.30, we got the call that he'd been in an accident. 
I called his cell phone to try to get him. Uh, actually got a, a deputy sheriff that answered the cell phone and couldn't give me a lot of information. The good news was that he was responsive. The bad? He told first responders he was losing feeling in his legs. Walker was paralyzed from the waist down. Yeah, it's a bad thing that happened, but it's not, it's not the end of the world. Usually you, you see those moments of where they go through some, some moments of, you know, being depressed about the situation, you know, wanting to separate themselves from people. We never saw that out of Walker, you know. What's up, Shorty? An emotional scene at the Atala County Fairgrounds. Walker Hill helped from his wheelchair to a standing position out there at center field. Every face lit up as soon as they saw him get out. He really pushed us. He'd get on to us when we needed to be gotten on to. The boys would be having a down inning and he would be like, guys, you can do this. I know you can. Now come on, you know, suck it up, let's go. To see that, that you know, he was still, you know, holding the rope and, and having their back um, during the entire process was, was something that definitely gave our team a boost. Walker Hill will come out to the mound to throw the first pitch. For a mom, the pitch could not have been any more perfect. It was obviously a strike right down the middle. To me, baseball has given me the biggest practice to everyday life. Face adversity in a game, you deal with it, you get better. It may not be that day, but you work at it the rest of the week, you get better at it with this, how to wreck and no longer able to walk. It's a bad situation, but it could have been worse. I never would have thought that a small town guy in Kosciuszko, Mississippi would have, would be shown the amount of love and support that everyone's done for me. I could not be more proud of you than I am right at this moment. Walker, mom will be always be your biggest fan. Congratulations, Walker. Hey, high school sports fans, it's the Big Aristotle here to present some of the biggest awards of the night. So stick around. I've been preparing all week. I really hope I make Miss Swan proud. That's my fourth grade teacher. Definitely don't want to end up in detention again. outstanding individual achievements in all different sports from this past school year. But now we focus on the heart of high school athletics, yeah. the team. And a crucial ingredient for success at any level, the coach. Mm -hmm. And to present our awards for the best team and best coach, please welcome someone who is no stranger to success, legendary coach Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer has found success at every stop of his coaching career, including three national championships. He's the winner of multiple National Coach of the Year awards, and this fall, he'll make his NFL debut as head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi guys, we know that good coaches and teams of this world are judged by the wins and losses. But we all know that there's a lot more behind the scenes. Strategy, teaching, training, and a lot of pushing. But a coach excels when his or her team truly comes together as one. And you know it doesn't matter what sport you play, there really is nothing like being part of an exceptional team. It's never easy, of course. Nothing worthwhile ever is. The hours and hours of practice, the growth of a unit, going through all the ups and downs, the highs and lows of a season together. When you become a great team, a special bond forms between the players, the coaches, and the support staff. 
That's like nothing else I've ever felt. Yes, there's some magic needed to make great coaches and great teams, but don't take this old coach's word for it. Let's hear from some athletes who know a thing or two about winning. A good teammate accepts you as you are, yet challenges you to become even better because they see the best in you. A good teammate is someone who wants the same amount of success for you as they do themselves. A good teammate is unselfish. Somebody who always um, stays positive. The way you grow, uh, the way your game grows, the way your IQ grows, uh, a lot of times is, is off the basis of how your coach. A good coach is consistent. A good coach is someone that can motivate you to do things that your mind doesn't even think you can do. Good coaches understand that their role is not just to, to coach, but to teach, to inspire, and motivate an athlete. Okay guys, they really did say it best, but now let's give out some awards to some who've proven they know what it takes to come together as a team and bring home the wins. Here are your finalists for the Team of the Year. And the Mississippi Team of the Year is the Shoba High Central girls softball team. Ranked first in the USA Today Sports NFCA High School Super 25 poll, the Neshoba Central softball team completed its 32-0 season with a 14-2 win over East Central on May 14th. The victory marked the Rockets' eighth straight 5A state championship. With the 2020 season ending after 11 games due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Neshoba Central hasn't lost a game since April 26, 2019. As the top-ranked team in the nation, the Rockets get their opponent's best shot every game, but they continue to hold their winning record and claim as the state's best. Congratulations, guys. Way to dominate the competition. Now for the Coach of the Year, and the finalists are... And the Mississippi Coach of the Year is Herbert Davis of Madison Ridgeland Academy. While there are many great coaches across the state of Mississippi, Madison Ridgeland Academy's head football coach, Herbert Davis, separated himself from the rest. He led the Patriots to a 12-0 record this season and the Mississippi 6A state championship, marking the second straight state title for the Patriots. He accomplished this in a year even after dealing with a stage five kidney disease and hoping for a new kidney to save his life. But Davis worked to keep his focus and be the coach he always had for his players and coaching staff, even with the added difficulties of managing the disease and staying engaged in a time of COVID. But if anything, the added adversity seemed to inspire the team. Madison Ridgeland Academy won its playoff games over Jackson Academy and Presbyterian Christian by an average of 27.5 points. With 26 years coaching experience and a passion that inspires, his team continues to respond to his leadership. He took over as head coach of Madison Ridgeland Academy in January of 2014. And since then, his school has become a Mississippi football powerhouse. Congratulations, coach. Excellent job. All right, guys, the moment we have all been waiting for. It's time to reveal the top male and female athletes of the year. Yes. These are exemplary athletes who have stolen the spotlight, dominated the season, and shown what it means to be unstoppable. To give us a helping hand with the female athlete of the year is the all-time assist leader in WNBA history, the great Sue Bird. Sue Bird has been a basketball superstar for more than 25 years. She earned the Naismith College Player of the Year and a three-time Nancy Lieberman Award winner. Bird was the number one pick of the 2002 WNBA Draft, an 11-time All-Star, two NCAA championships, four WNBA crowns, four Olympic gold medals, four FIBA World Cup titles, plus a dozen or so International League titles. Hey everybody, Sue Bird here. We've arrived at my favorite part of the show. 
Female Athlete of the Year brings together the best of the best, all in one award. It's kind of like that scene in Endgame when all the female heroes assemble, only instead of lasers, swords, and tricked out suits, you gals have sports equipment, but you get the idea. The point is you have all excelled in your individual sports. You've all overcome obstacles standing between you and success, and you all have earned our lasting admirations. So really, there is no downside here. Just one of you gets a little bit more of an upside, but you all leave tonight winners. All right, let's meet our finalists for Female Athlete of the Year. Brooklyn Bianca Mano, a junior from Long Beach High School. Madison Booker, a sophomore from Germantown High School. And Parker Bracken, a senior from Jackson Academy. And the Female Athlete of the Year for the state of Mississippi is Brooklyn Bianca Mano of Long Beach High School. Who knows where the road will take sophomore Brooklyn Bianca Mano, but wherever she goes, you can guarantee she'll get there fast. Bianca Mano won eight of nine races last fall, including her state title run, which helped Long Beach take fourth in Class 5A. This past school year, in track and cross country, she broke the tape 22 times. Her only second place finish came in a 1600 meter race at state. Every other in-state race she ran, she finished first. The state meet 5K record holder, she took silver at the 2017 Junior Olympics in the 4K and owned state age group records at 5K for ages 13 through 15. In the classroom, she also maintains her pattern of excellence, ranking first in her class with a 5.34 GPA on a 4.0 scale. Congratulations, Brooklyn. I can't wait to see what you do in your senior year. Now let's meet the contenders for Male Athlete of the Year. With so much incredible talent on display, we needed somebody of equal stature. So our final presenter of the night needs no introduction. Yeah, but we're going to give him one anyway, because if we don't, I know he'll call us out and he'll say, Hey, there's uh, Rutledge, why, why did you throw Jesus some love? Wow. So here to present our final award of the night, the one and only Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, the big Aristotle himself, is feared by opponents and loved by millions. Shaq's combination of size, speed, and strength led to four NBA championship rings, an MVP title, 15 All-Star Game appearances, an Olympic gold medal, and a first ballot invite to the Hall of Fame. What's up everybody, Diesel in the house, represent for all the major athletes out there in high school. It's time to give out the best male athlete award. Anytime somebody wants to put the word best next to your name, that is a major sign of respect. It means they know you do hard work to be great, but also you pay attention to detail. It means you rise to the occasion when your team really needs it. It means you make your parents proud. So let's give it up for the male athletes who are vying for the title of the best. And the finalists for the Male Athlete of the Year are... Ty Keyes, a senior from Taylorsville High School. Braden Montgomery, a senior from Madison Central High School. And Deshaun Ruffin, a senior from Callaway High School. And the Male Athlete of the Year for the state of Mississippi is Ty Keyes of Taylorville High School. Whether on the diamond or on the turf, magic seems to follow Southern Miss quarterback signee Ty Keyes. He racked up touchdowns and RBIs as part of two teams that made history for Taylorsville as they secured state championship titles in both sports this past year. On the diamond, Keyes had a 427 on base percentage and helped the teams tally with two home runs and 44 runs batted in. But it was the football field where the Taylorsville star really shined. Keyes was a show-stopping force for Tartar fans from the moment he took to the field as a freshman. His first varsity year, he passed for 4,500 yards and 45 touchdowns, and that was just the beginning. The four-star recruit and three-time Mr. Football in Mississippi led Taylorsville to a 55-3 record and three football state championships during his four years as a starter. Congratulations. Best of luck at Southern. 
What a great night. We have had so much fun <laughs> celebrating your accomplishments. And we want to thank all the parents, guardians, teachers, and role models who have helped these amazing young adults get to where they are today. You're all so important. Exactly. And to all the athletes, coaches, and winners, congratulations. Yeah. Until next year, that's a wrap. Yes. <laughs>I'd give to my high school self would be don't sweat the small stuff. I would tell my high school self to take time and enjoy the little things. High school flies by and before you know it you will be an adult. <laughs> so have fun and enjoy the time with your friends and family. Well there's a couple things. I think one would to tell myself to be yourself and a lot of times that's a lot easier said than done but I know looking back I was like every other high school kid trying to figure things out you know seeing what your friends are doing seeing what your family's doing trying to see where you fit in and I think a lot of times um, as kids you know we don't have the confidence to just be who we are only surround yourself with people that you respect that you love that love you back that support you you've got to have positive enforcement in every way around you. Continue to be a leader and not a follower. Continue to do right things in the community, in schools, uh, around other student athletes. It's supposed to be fun. Work hard, put everything into it, but make sure that you have joy when you compete. It's not about the outcome, it's about competing with all of your heart for something that you love. The outcome, the results will take care of themselves if you do that. So make sure you have fun, have fun with your team, rejoice in each other, rejoice in your talent, and just go for it. I think I would tell her first and foremost to enjoy the process and have fun and stay present in the moment. Um, and then I would say to challenge herself and to kind of run towards her fears and get uncomfortable. I think that that's where um, people learn and grow the most is making mistakes, um, taking advantage of the mistakes as an opportunity and learning from them. My advice would be make the most of your high school experience. How you do that, it's about people, it's about relationships. Be yourself and be a leader before being anything.